Uh, welcome back to Crafting Interpreters in Rust. Uh, last time we read chapter 10 on how to implement functions. And today we're going to implement functions. Um, or as much as we can. So let's catch up on sort of the things we need to do. We have parsing for them done. Um, <clears throat> We have to see, okay, this is parsing. He has this argument limit. We don't, I'll worry about that later. The basic idea is you evaluate arguments and then you have a call on the functional. Well, we need to create a scope with all the parameters and just pass the candle. That's right. The The main, <clears throat> I guess, the interesting part was down here with the uh, the scope and what it should contain to support closures. <clears throat> and I think, so this chapter is like doing it in a basic way. And then next chapter is about uh, fixing it so that it works how you expect with um, static scoping. So what should we do? We should figure out how to interpret a function, which is some case in here. Um, fun decal. So there is both the declaration of a function and the later call of a function, which let's see, where is the call of a function case? Forgot. Oh, okay. We'll be filling that out. And we'll be filling out a fun decal. I will, I'll try to do this first. Okay, did we figure out what goes into a fun decal? Oh, it's wrapped around a function object. Right. So um okay. Uh, function was what uh, list of parameters and a bunch of statements. Uh, yeah, we had a special rule for it, which I will go see what it is. So the reason it's, it is its own type is like there's a special rule, uh, which was like a a named sub rule in the book. So <clears throat> in the book's grammar. So we have the name of the function, the parameters, and the body. It's how come the parameters are? Oh, right. Okay. No types because uh, it's dynamically typed. So it's just the names of the parameters. And um, the body. Uh, shouldn't it be vector statements? This? Yeah. Why? Uh, isn't it going to be a block? So a block is a kind of statement. So isn't it going to be that? I see. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to get the variables out. And I, my Rust is, I'm, I'm rusty on Rust right now. I've been writing a lot of not Rust. So, uh, how come it doesn't know what's supposed to be in here? Uh, you can try typing let uh, function capitalized. 
uh, no, uh, capitalized function. So you take in a type, then curly braces equals on the same line uh, after curly braces. Type okay. equals a reference to function, a uh, small letter function. Uh, add semicolon and the end. Uh, Rust analyzer is going to complain that fields are missing and will help you to add missing details. Mm, this time it isn't. All right. Uh, uh, and parameters. Okay. Uh, oh, ah, it's, it's because we don't have it. Okay, got it. Function. There we go. All right. And now they're just unused. Got it. Um, okay. So what do we do with these? We uh, make some kind of object in the environment or in the scope representing the function, right? Um, uh, do we even need to do anything? I mean, we need to register the function so that this name means that function later or something. Um, uh, okay. okay, so here, right, okay. So he had this locks callable thing which is an interface. <laughs> yeah, my, my Rust. In this case, Rusty is the bad Rusty, not the idiomatic Rusty. Okay, so the... Uh, let's see. I guess I'll okay, we need to do is to insert name and something into and stack somehow. Yeah. Okay, so let me see where this ends up. Because he makes he makes a he has an interface, which is a callable, and then uh, the function object that you put into the scope implements that, and it contains a declaration, which is a function statement. Okay. And you can call it, and but then where do you actually put it? So let me locks function. Where does he call create a locks function? Environment dot define the name of the function, this object. Okay. So what do we? What are we allowed to put into? An env. It's it's a runtime value. So we need another case for value, I think. Uh, I am not sure it's a great idea. Because this will spread all over the place where we do pattern match. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it makes sense to have a separate namespace for functions. So maybe top level hash sure. or... So an, an environment now contains uh, both? Uh, okay. So that they don't. So that the value type of the hash map doesn't have to be the same, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we can just use function. So yeah, function means this thing. Yeah. Is that the same as what is necessary to call the function later? I guess. Uh, we can call statement, yeah. I guess there's something different, but but this is the uh, AST. Mm -hmm. Is that what we need? 
I thought he did some kind of thing where he like baked it in somehow. Uh, whatever. Okay. I'm not going to worry about what he did. Let's just do something that makes sense. That's because it's Java. Yeah. Okay, Okay. we need to make some changes. Mm -hmm. Ah, we need to drive the bug. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, default, default, or environment default should work, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh. All right. And so this is all stuff to do with variables. We're going to duplicate it because it's the same pattern for functions, but mm, it'll work. env dot variables. Okay. Now watch. Uh, and is anything else broken? Uh, okay. Time to make a test for function. A what function? A uh, test for function declaration and evaluation. Yeah. All right. I, you know, OK. That's I don't feel like it right now, but let's fix this or remove the test or something. Ridiculous. OK. And actually, I'll just comment about, I'll comment out the test. Like, I don't, I want to see a green check mark. We'll fix this much later. Um, okay, so yeah, let's see, this is evaluator tests, right? Yes. Um, did we, did, so did we already have tests for putting some stuff in? Yeah, okay, so. I'll copy these and make them about functions. Um, anything else? All right. Can you assign functions and locks? I think so. Like assign to a new value because they're they're first class, so you either do have closures. Uh, but that's a good question. Yeah, I don't I don't think they're special case. I think yeah. 
they are just variables. Well, you don't treat it, reassign it, you declare the function with the same name. Like this example, for example, how do you mm -hmm. reassign it? Let me go look at just the language overview. See if we know that. Hmm. Okay, so I only, yeah, I only see one function declaration syntax, which always includes the name of the function. You can't, yeah, you can assign. Yeah, you can, so this is assigning variable. a variable, not a function. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying now. All right, so no. I guess, is there, is that a thing that we can, try and reject like or it does it not even make sense uh, i guess it doesn't even make sense right. okay let's declare a function um on right And actually, I just kind of want it to be like this format. Okay. You can have multi-line strings in Rust, by the way. Uh, do you need a different quote or anything, or does it just no, kind of work? Just, okay. just like that. Okay. Um, all right, so this is return sum, and we want it to equal some kind of function. We'll fix that later. Uh, not get var. We get... ended up making separate namespace. Are, are we going to, do you want to combine them into a single get at some point? Maybe. Well, if we, we will have to represent closures with the variable mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. Maybe we will have to go back to having just one enum, I don't know. Yeah, because, because uh, yeah, because a value can be a function, right? The value of a variable can be a function. So we either have to put it in here or put something in here that represents a point yeah. of your function. Maybe. Do you want to just, that this feels right to me, just putting a function in here. Mm, yeah, sure, I guess. Because we kind of like bifurcated it. Um. Yeah. Let's see how much code breaks if we add it. Sure. Uh, this does, uh, I think it's probably something as a syntax error, so it's not worth analyzing everything. Hold on. Okay. Only that. Uh, you can just say it's a function. Yeah. How come more do, more things don't break? I guess not many things actually exhaustively work on every value. 
like most of them reject only take a particular type of value or um Okay. and reject the other ones so does that just pass the tests or does it not compile pass the tests Amazing. okay well then let's do that Yeah. uh, i'm just going to go back to the beginning Uh, anything interesting in here? Nah. I'll keep this test. Oh, I know. Okay, hold on. Yeah, okay. There we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, right, F. Fine. All right, I need to derive this. Or something, I forgot how this works. Well, uh, you can try to print a function name, but I'm not sure if it's even worth Mm -hmm. doing it. I mean, I'm going to follow the, the printout format that he has, which is defined. Oh, wrong chapter. I could use like uh, angle brackets like this. Okay, so that native FN, and then other otherwise, if it's not a native FN, it's like it says FN name of the function. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say this. If you want to print function name, you have to access it inside of uh, fun, but outside of uh, the template. So template parameters cannot have arbitrary expressions. Uh, no, uh, you type F here. Yes, then the curly braces with, without anything inside, uh, then comma fun dot name. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what? Why are you not like? Ah, right. private fields. And you probably want to decorate it with uh, triangle braces and the fan and whatever. Yeah. Else you want. Hmm. Moment. Did that happen? Oh, so I typed it wrong. That's what I meant. Hey, I forgot to.
I uncommented out the test. Mm -hmm. um, and, I think we should just try calling it, see if it works. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be painful to try and recreate it as a valley. Yeah. Or if you want to add an assertion that this is a function, but without checking what's inside, you can try to use matches macro if you're familiar with it. Here? No, I don't, yeah. I don't know what that is. So uh, replace assert equals with just assert. Uh, then uh, matches, matches, exclamation like mark. Okay. Uh, paren goes outside of the just move, move the parent yeah, all the way down. Need to do a, a live, live session, maybe. Uh, I'm too lazy. Right. Uh, move parent from line 55 to 61. So now you have a pattern matching on line 55. You have an expression you're trying to match. Line 56 to 69, you treat it as a pattern. So get rid of these matches. And you should be able to use uh, like underscore to ignore parts, like try to ignore the name. Like that? And, yeah. So that's that's the macro doing stuff, right? Yeah. Oops. Okay. Very interesting. Um, okay. Not yet implemented, great. At least the test will check that what we have is a function. Yeah. Okay. So. What do we need to do? Visit fun decal. Visit something, right? Yeah, visit a function declaration. So he calls that function state. So he makes a locks function. The only difference is, so this is a parser function. This is a function at the level of the evaluator. The, the difference is, I think, the callable thing. So I don't think we need that distinction. Yeah, we can just add the variable. OK, and then he puts it in the environment, which we have lying around. So that will work.
That rust analyzer is being annoying. So I will just go. Hmm, okay, so this is an owned function. Do we need that? Uh, we need to clone it. Always or right now? Uh, I imagine always. Or, yeah. well, problem is we need to store the reference from declarations to environment stack. What do we do with strings? Will we clone them? Like this? Of our decal? Uh, how do we represent string inside and stack? Is it own string? Yeah. So we will have to clone the function as well. Yep, OK. <laughs> Got it. But we won't have to do this often. Mm -hmm. Okay. It passes. I can take away the matches probably and put in the exact value, but maybe we don't care. Or the matches is good enough. No, I'll, I'll do it. We cared we cared about the right values being there because it tests the uh, parser, I guess. Well, you can leave matches. You can just fill in more details. Yeah. Except it needs to be the right type. Yeah. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. Don't know. If you get rid of the old, what kind of complaints you get? Back to string. Yeah. Thought that would fix it. Is it complaining about now? Sorry, say again. Oh. Uh, what is it complaining about now? Nothing. Only Rust Analyzer is complaining. <laughs> All right, fun. So Rust Analyzer is not understanding the macro, but Rust is. OK, cool. Um, a dot to the Oh, no, no, it's because I was not compiling the test. Um, there we go. Expected comma. Why do you expect a comma? Ah, I don't think you can use it inside the pattern. Anyway, if you don't want to use matches, we I can go know. back to our set equals. But that means making everything correct. Yep. Just want to, okay. Just want an empty box. I just want it to compile so I can see what it actually is. That doesn't work, does it?
Um. I don't really think it makes much sense to make this monstrosity because we can test if it evaluates to the right thing or not. The fact that its internal representation is correct. Mm -hmm. Well, we will test it, but it seems very fragile. You know, you just want to keep the uh, matches from playing yeah. with that. Yeah. All right, fine with me. Okay. Um, okay, so now we need to know how to call a function. Um, so how is it? So uh, we need the to do with terms. Of variables. Uh, we get them from the environment stack. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with, wait, when we call it, we pass a list of parameters. So we take a list of parameters, mm -hmm. and we take a list of the names, and create a new scope with bindings. Yep. And just... Yep. Okay, so... Call is somewhere here. Base path. Hmm, okay. It's not expected. Okay, he also has this thing about return statements. Uh, right, where he uses these the Java exceptions to do the same thing as what a return does, which I didn't like. Um, we have to do something in those lines. Mm. Okay. The return statements. Actually, what is that? Say return statement, which we just didn't have typed out. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I would do is I would go to the test, add a uh, call to the functions we just defined, and see what kind of parsed result it mm -hmm. gives us. And it kind of makes sense to, to keep it within the same test, because sure. if the second test is going to be the same, any change to the function will mean you'll have to update both tests. So go on line 49 and add the call to this function. So that would be return sum 5 and 6 or whatever. And maybe assign it to a mm. variable and then we can check. Well, uh,
Okay. Didn't figure out how to parse all of it. It's weird, right? I'm going to do that. Turn statement. Okay. Yeah. So it didn't get past the function declaration parsing. Uh, it parsed it, but uh, what are we trying to parse? It should be a program. Yeah. This. Hmm. Okay. okay. Gotta go look at the parser. Yeah. Take this problem program. Another test for the parser. Uh, I just want to assert that it finished. How do I do that? I think we returned the leftovers somewhere. Yeah, second parameter. You just assert that second parameter sample. A canonical approach to check if something is empty, it says dot is empty. Uh, assert, not equals, yeah, get rid of length and. Yeah, got it. Yes. Okay. It doesn't mean much here, but in certain cases, it can be more efficient. I kind of want to see, well, we know what went wrong. We just don't know why, because it printed out what went wrong. It like got through here and then didn't do anything after. Right. Um, first thing that's left over is token var. So, yeah. It basically ignores everything after function definition. Yeah. Uh, we have a big test that parses a bunch of crap. Do you have function definition there? Yeah. We do. And how do we parse it? We don't. Uh, we do. Actually, yeah, we, we try we it, but we really don't test it. it. It's not testing anything. It's just printing it out. So, but I thought we it did it without works. printing. <clears throat> We don't know if uh, it consumes everything here either. Yeah. Oops. So I guess let's go to parser for the program, see what it does. Okay, it fails somewhere.
It fails right here. So no, no, no. Program that's, passes that's about one it. item on the top level and does nothing else. Hold on, it's not there. Is it this first one? <coughs> okay. Uh, breakfast too. So it fails here. What did we just do there? Let me take this out. Wait a minute. Okay. Well, fortunately, we have a smaller test case that also fails. We can look into that. Yeah. But these are, yeah, yeah, these are different though. Okay. Um, yep, sure. So what should we, should we, we can add some debugging stuff into the parser like we used to. Uh, I think we just look at what it does for program new. Okay. Body is a vector of declarations. Fun decal is one of the declarations. So go here. Okay, we have a star. Uh, fun decal, fun, and then we parse a function. Which is identifier, look back at our example. Um, uh, put, we have code somewhere. I forgot where they require semicolons. Do you, do I need them here? There or what? Hmm. Maybe it's that. Let me try this. That was it. Ugh. All right, interesting. So let me go put that over here. So is it just missing semicolon? I think so. Wow. Our error messages suck. Yep. Okay, still fails there. Why? The no, that's yeah, that's this one. It Why fails had not implemented. It shouldn't. Uh, evaluator line three two nine. Oh yeah, okay. It fails when it tries to call the function. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So we added it 
to the parser to see what it produces. Now we can go back and see what exactly it produces. So uh, we know how to here? test out the print. What did you uh, What did you want to do? I just uh, add panic with uh, x dot x unwrap dot dot zero. Um, is that back in this test? Uh, yeah, it could be here. A panic AST. Uh, quotes, curly braces. A panic takes a template. No, get rid of AST at the front. Uh, column Wait, question mark. Yeah. That. So right now it should, us, should show us what exactly it passed. Uh, I think we need to move it right after we parse it. So line 153. Okay, that's what oh. we're working with. Okay, yeah, so it's called an args. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a, an expression call, right? Base is this, path is the vector of arcs. So this, I guess this is for chain functions because we had to parse those. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do here. So uh, we're writing Rust. Yeah. Not Odin. I'm uh that that was Go. I've been doing Go for work. So. Go. Yeah. That's so um base. It's uh state dot get. Base, which is an expression. So I need to the. I need to pull it out. Yeah. So wait, this is a box expression. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot how to do anything in Rust. Um, let so okay. We're gonna get the function. We're gonna call it with the args. Except I think path is not args because it's like we have to do some weird thing of like the nested function call. Um, but we, at some point we need to evaluate args. The path is this, and it's going to have args in it this time, but not always. So I want to know, like, what what is it, when in the evaluation do we get to just calling a function that we know the full name of the function and the args? Um, Uh, what type is base? Base is a box expression. I see. So I guess we do pattern match. If it's identifier, it's identifier. If it's closure in some way. Yeah. Otherwise we panic. I don't get it yet. Um, 
what's in his call expression. He has call E. It's yeah. Okay, let's see what he has here. Call E. Ren. List of expression arguments. Okay, so I think what happened is we implemented it from the full grammar once he'd already had the member access stuff, which he's not going to do until like two chapters from now. So he's implementing it the wrong way now, and then he'll fix it later. I think that's what's happening. How we can do pattern match and handle identifier case? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'll, just, I'll I'll pick back up here next time. It, it's eight. So. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, okay. Decent. Make sure to save commit. Yeah. Probably comment it out test calls into separate commit. Questions, comments, suggestions. Yeah. I think we're making progress. Okay, um, this is add function type uh, variant to bracket and make yes. Cool. All right.